In this video, I'll show you how to make interlocking 3D rings in Inkscape. Let's start by going to the Circles and Ellipses tool, clicking and dragging in the canvas, and holding Ctrl to create a circle. Next, we'll turn the circle into a ring by cutting out the center. To do this, we can go to the Select tool, duplicate the circle by right-clicking it and choosing Duplicate, change the color of the duplicate so we'll be able to see it, then let's grab one of the scale handles and scale it down while holding Shift and Ctrl to keep it centered. Now we can select both circles and cut the small one out of the big one by going to Path, Difference. Alright, now we'll give the ring a 3D look by adding some drop shadows. For this, let's go up to Filters, then Shadows and Glows, and choose Drop Shadow. First, we want to go to the Blur Color tab, and make sure the color is on black, with about 70% opacity, and make sure the Use Objects Color option here is turned off. Ok, now let's go back to the Options tab, and let's make this one an Inner Drop Shadow, by making sure Shadow Type here is set to Inner. Alright, now we can go ahead and check Live Preview down here. To put the shadow on the bottom left, I have the horizontal offset set to a positive value and the vertical offset set to a negative value. And we can adjust the blur radius to make the shadow more or less blurry. Alright, that looks good, so I'll click Apply. Next, we can add some rim light along the edge of the shadow. For this, let's go to the Blur Color tab and change the color to white by dragging the value slider all the way to the right. Let's lower the opacity a bit more. Okay, let's go back to the Options tab and check Live Preview. We'll need to lower the blur radius of this, as well as lower the values of the offsets. Ok, let's click Apply. Finally, we can add an outer drop shadow coming from the bottom left of the ring. To do this, let's first change the color back to black, and raise up the opacity some more. Then let's go to the Options tab, change the shadow type to Outer, and check Live Preview. This time, we'll need to make the horizontal offset negative and the vertical offset positive. Ok, we can click Apply, and we're finished with the drop shadows, so we can close out of this dialog. One more thing we can do is add some highlights. We can do this using the Specular Light filter by going to Filters, Bevels, Specular Light. Let's go ahead and check Live Preview. Ok, so we want the color of the highlight to be white with a low opacity. And up here, we want azimuth to be around 300, which puts the highlight along the outer rim at the top right and the inner rim at the bottom left. And we can adjust the smoothness, brightness, and elevation for different results. Ok, when we have something that looks good, we can click Apply and close this out. Alright, now let's get to work on creating some interlocking rings. We'll start with two rings. So let's duplicate this ring and move it to the right while holding Ctrl to prevent it from moving vertically. I'll make this ring blue. Let's lower it below the other ring by clicking the lower selection to bottom button up here. Ok, so if these rings were normal paths with no filters applied to them, we could use path operations to make them look interlocked. For example, I can first select both rings and turn off the filters by going to Filters, Remove Filters. Next, to make it look like the blue ring is going above the red ring down here, I'll first duplicate the blue ring. Then I'll go to the Pen tool and create a path that covers the intersection of the rings here. Then I'll go back to the Select tool and select both the new path and the blue ring duplicate by holding Shift and clicking it. Then I'll go to Path, Intersection. This leaves me with just this part of the blue ring duplicate. The rings already look like they're interlocked now, but we probably don't want this extra piece here, so we can cut this out of the red ring. To do this, we can select both the extra piece and the red ring, and go to Path, Difference. This cuts the part out of the red ring that was being overlapped by the extra piece. Ok, now if we reapply the filters to the rings, which we can do by selecting them both, opening the Filter Editor by going to Filters, Filter Editor, and checking the box next to the filter in the list here, we can see that the filter effects cause some problems down here. To fix this, we'll need to use a combination of path operations and clipping. Alright, so first, let's undo until we're back to having two full rings with the filters applied to them. Ok, now let's duplicate the blue ring. And again, we want just the part of the blue ring that's overlapping the red ring down here. 
So let's go to the pin tool and create a path around the intersection, making sure to get all of the blue ring's outer drop shadow inside the path. Now we can select both the path and the blue ring duplicate and go to path intersection. Okay, next, we want just the part of this blue piece that's overlapping the red ring. And we don't want the filter effects to show at the edges of the piece. To do this, we can use a duplicate of the red ring to clip the blue piece. So first, let's duplicate the red ring. Then let's hold shift and click the blue piece. And to do clipping, we can go to object, clip, set clip. This leaves us with just this part of the blue piece. And as you can see, the filter effects have also been clipped at the edges. Alright, now we just need to use a duplicate of this piece to hide the part of the red ring that's overlapping the blue ring here. So I'll press Ctrl Z to put the piece back in place, then let's duplicate it. But because we've already used clipping on this piece, we can't just use it straight away to clip something else, because it will undo the previous clipping. To get around this, we first need to group the piece. To do this, we can right click the piece and choose group. Now as far as Inkscape is concerned, this is just a normal object that hasn't been clipped. Alright, and to hide just the part of the red ring that's underneath the piece, we'll need to use inverse clipping. To do this, we can select both the blue piece and the red ring and go to Object, Clip, Set Inverse Clip. And there we go. We do still have this extra blue piece here, but it's necessary in order to show the blue ring's outer drop shadow on top of the red ring. Okay, now let's see how we can do this with three rings. First, let's select both rings and duplicate them. Let's bring them over here. We won't be needing a duplicate of the extra piece here. Alright, now we need to release the clip of the red ring. To do this, we can select it and go to Object, Clip, Release Clip. And we can delete this piece here that we used to clip the ring. Alright, let's duplicate the red ring and bring it down here. I'll make this one green. Let's lower it below both of the other rings. Alright, to make all of these rings look interlocked, we simply need to make it so the green ring appears to be going above the red ring where they overlap here and here. To do this, let's first duplicate the green ring. Now we want to clip out everything except for the parts of the duplicate that are overlapping the red ring. We can do this by duplicating the red ring, holding shift and selecting the green ring duplicate and going to Object, Clip, Set Clip. And finally, we can use a duplicate of the green ring to clip out the parts of the red ring where it's overlapping the green ring. So let's duplicate the green ring again. Hold shift and select the red ring and go to Object, Clip, Set Inverse Clip. And that's it. Okay, so that's how we can create interlocking 3D rings in Inkscape. Thanks for watching.